Hey Camp Candy family, it's Rita. So good to see you all, I miss you all, and I hope you all are being healthy and safe and enjoying your summers. We miss you greatly. But, on to the nature segment here. As most of you are aware, I am not a nature buff. Don't like me any dirt or bugs, but I do enjoy the beauty of nature. And if you're in that boat, you could appreciate some of my wonderful house plants that I have collected here in my little mud room um, for your enjoyment. And I figured I could show you guys um, some of the wonderful house plants that are available now um, that are super easy to maintain. And most of these are pet friendly because um, I don't know if you saw, but I have a ferocious kitten and a puppy who would both eat plants if I left them around. So we try to maintain a non-toxic household here for their safety. Um, so I can go through each plant that I have. I actually have a couple more that are whatever. These are what I put out. <laughs> um, so here is Barry the Bonsai. He's got this like thick stem. He looks like a little tree. Look how cute he is. He's pet friendly. Um, and Barry just seemed like a sturdy fellow. So I felt like that was a good name for him. This I just brought as a fun, he, this is an herb. It's called basil. I call him basil, the basil plant. Delicious. Smells wonderful. I add it to a lot of my recipes. Very easy to maintain um, as long as you keep it watered, which I have 100% not and had to get new plants because I'm just not so good with the green thumb. Um, then I have a little pot of some succulents. Um, these look like a Judy to me. This looks like a Sunny to me. Look how cute she is. Oh, these are a little more prickly. I'd say they're more of a, a Peter. Prickly pear. And then these look more like a um, a Sammy. And this looks like a he's fancy. I'm going to call him like Tim because he's fancy. And in the middle here is a snake plant, which they are not pet friendly. I usually keep this out on my porch where my animals don't go. Um, next up in my lineup of highly interesting houseplants is Jennifer. She is a ponytail palm tree. She won't get super big. And look, her hair looks like a like she could have it up in a ponytail, which I thought was super cute. I named her Jennifer for that reason, because I just thought like that was like fun. Fun Jennifer with her ponytail. Ooh, this is a African Violet, which surprise, surprise, I named Violet. Also fairly easy to maintain. Doesn't require a lot, but um, you can't get the leaves wet or it leaves like these brown splotches all over. So you just have to like, squirt really close to the dirt so the leaves don't get wet. How they don't get brown in nature, I have no idea. I don't get that. Like rain doesn't know not to touch the leaves, but whatever. Who am I? And then this is Angela, the aloe plant. Look how pretty. And her um, little leaves here are full of this awesome goo called aloe, but you'll see it in a lot of lotions. It helps um, calm skin irritations. So this is just where that goo comes from, straight from the, from the Angela. And then this little guy, you can see him. This is called my philodendrian. He is named Phil. He hangs out in my bathroom. Probably not his favorite place to be, but I enjoy looking at him there. 
Um, he survives really well in there because he likes high humidity and we shower in the bathroom so that makes it high humidity. He is not pet friendly though. Um, so I keep him high up on a shelf in my bathroom where my cat cannot eat him. Um, and this little lady, I call the dragon lady. Um, or Debbie. Debbie's dragon lady. She's really pretty. But again, toxic to pets, so I keep her up high so that my pets do not suffer. Um, but she's super pretty and just brings in a lot of natural color into my very dull house. <laughs> and up here, I have a, another um, snake plant. I call her Medusa. She's been there for a little bit longer, so she's earned a name. But what's key cool about the snake plants is like the leaves actually look like snakes. So I think that's where that comes from, which is pretty neat. Again, they are not um, pet friendly, but I, as you can see, I keep them high up so you, uh, my pets can't get to her. Um, so that's kind of a little tour of some of the plants I have um, collected over the past couple of years. Um, my friend also showed me how to press flowers, um, which is a really cool way to utilize the petals of um, flowers and make mementos um, when something special happens and you're given flowers like your prom or whatever, an anniversary, a birthday, whatever, and it's just a nice little token, so I make those too. So if anyone's interested in learning how to do that, you're welcome to contact me. And if you need anything else about houseplants, obviously your gal, I am uh, well-versed. <laughs> but I think it's a great alternative for people who don't particularly love getting dirty or touching bugs, but do love the beauty of nature, like me. But all right, guys. Hi. Hey everybody, Eddie from week one. Nice to see you guys. Uh, welcome to our nature hike. Well, we're actually, uh, this is a what's in your backyard uh, segment. So, uh, you know, I have a backyard, but it's not super exciting to have a lot of fun stuff out here that we can take a look at nature-wise. So what we're gonna do is take a quick walk to a creek that's right near my house. Uh, so I'm gonna be walking there. I'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, welcome to the creek near my house. Thanks for following me along. I know that was a tough journey uh, and took a super long time, but we're here now. Uh, so I'm excited to show you everything that the creek here has to offer. This is such a fun little ecosystem right here in your own backyard. Uh, creek ecosystem. If you want, I made up the word creekosystem, so feel free to use that around. Just give me credit, totally, totally no big deal. Uh, so I'm excited to show you. So let's flip this around, look at all the uh, diverse animals, plant life that we have here, and um, uh, I'm excited to show you this this stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. So the first thing you might notice is all the green plant life that we have here, uh, both on the side of the creek and in the creek itself in the form of algae. Um, so that's kind of the basis of the food chain. So the little bugs um, and invertebrates and um, tiny animals like that like to feed on those grasses and those uh, leaves and plants and uh, even some of the uh, bigger animals uh, will get some use out of, out of um, leaves and trees and things like that. If you can see right here, um, all these leaves have kind of made this little shelter a hiding place for maybe fish. And on a, on a bigger scale, if a big tree or a log falls into the creek, um, you know, it's a great place to look for big fish uh, if you're out going fishing or just want to go catch and, and see what you can find. Um, but as for invertebrates and bugs, they love the side of the creek here. They live right here underneath where those leaves are overhanging. You can see if we, we took a net and we dug in there, you'd probably really find some uh, mayflies. Um, you can see a little dragonfly hanging out there on the side of the 
Ooh, let's see if it zooms in and gets a little clearer. We'll just get a little closer. Um, so he's just sunning himself there. It's a pretty cool blue dragonfly. There we go. Um, so anyway, like a little crayfish uh, feed on the algae that's covering all these rocks down here. And then, so they are then the basis for uh, some of the bigger fish and turtles and snakes that kind of live here and, and they'll feed on that size animal. And then some larger animals will feed on the snakes and, and fish. So we have blue herons and we have egrets that, that we see around here a lot that kind of fly around and we'll go fishing in some of these darker, deeper spots. Um, so there's a shallower part of the creek over here on the left side. I'm zoom out a little bit. And then if you look over here to the right under this bank, uh, under this nice shady tree, there's a super deep part down there and that's where all the fish like to hang out. Um, so the bigger fish will hang out down there because they don't want to be swimming around all day long. It gets them, gets them tired so they hang out where the water is a little deeper and a little more still. Um, you see on the bank over there, there's probably, looks like it might be some snake holes right there on the edge. Um, I haven't seen any today but we'll keep our eyes out. Uh, I also am going to take you over and we'll show you and show you um, a couple of the crayfish that we've seen here and we've caught. I'm going to put my camera Hey again, everybody. Uh, and there's also a little waterfall over here, which is pretty cool. Let me take you over here. It's been a little, I don't want to drop my phone. There we go. Cool waterfall. Sometimes we see a, uh, a bird perched out over there on that sandy beach area. Nothing today, but we'll keep our eyes open. Um, we're gonna head back over there. See you in a minute. All right, so down here in a net, um, my son Jack caught a fish. See him flopping around in there? Oh, there he is, just like a little minnow. And, um, you know, like I said, they feed on the algae that's on the rocks down there. And, yep, and we have a leaf here. And the fish can feed on those leaves too. And then they get nice and big. And then some bigger animals, uh, like the birds and the snakes we talked about, will come down and, and grab those. Hey guys, welcome back. So here are a couple of the cool things that we caught today. So if you can see the big one there is our crayfish. Uh, we have two of them in here. Uh, we just got them a couple of minutes ago. We don't want to uh, keep them in here forever because those two guys like to, uh, you know, they're not the best of friends. They compete for food and resources and, and space. So we won't leave them together for too long. And we have some fish in there, also some little minnows. Uh, another reason not to keep different animals all together like this because that wouldn't be very nice um, uh, to be all stuck. They're probably getting kind of scared. So we're going to dump them out here in a minute and get them back to their back to their home. The crayfish we actually found right here under this rock. They like to live under rocks and for shelter and just to kind of hide out under there. So you just want to be careful. You know, when you're walking around the creek, suggest uh, wearing shoes. So if you can see I wear old shoes or Crocs or something, um, just so we're not stepping on animals that might not be super nice to us. Well, there's a pretty good sized fish right there. Hopefully we can See if I zoom in. So he's hanging out there under the bridge where it's a little, uh, he's got some shade and he's got, it's a little deeper. So it looks like the current isn't moving as fast. Um, what else? The other reason we don't want to wear shoes is because I don't know if you can see this hole under this bridge here. So this hole comes from the road right above there. And that hole's actually where the, um, the drain is. Uh, so the water, when it rains, goes down the curb into the drains and it comes right out there and into our creek. So, you know, people unfortunately will throw trash and uh, there might be broken glass or things in our creek. So those are all good reasons to wear shoes. Also good reasons, even if, you know, you're not throwing, uh, you don't want to throw trash obviously directly into the creek, but you always want to make sure that we're not picking up all our trash and putting it in the right spot. Cause if it's on the road or if it's in your front lawn and it gets, uh, the rain comes and sweeps it down to the gutter could very easily end up here and then uh, you know, could hurt people or animals. Um, it just doesn't look very nice either. So I hope you guys had a great time enjoying the creek ecosystem here by my house or creek ecosystem. Uh, and I can't wait to show you some more stuff. So see you guys later.